Happy Friday, Press Run Live. I hope you are having an awesome Friday and having a great weekend so far. It's Jack Raymond, online pastor. I'm really excited and grateful to be with you for our weekly devotional. And I'm excited to announce that we're launching a nine-week series covering the fruit of the Spirit for the next nine Fridays. But before we dive into that, uh, you may be asking, why am I wearing a bright pink shirt today? Well, we are just coming off Adventure Week here at Prestonwood, our vacation Bible school. and We've seen thousands of kids come to all of our campuses to worship Jesus, to hear Bible stories, and ultimately to hear the greatest news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we are celebrating this week more than 300 boys and girls who have put their faith and trust in Jesus for the very first time. So I hope you'll join us in just taking a moment uh, to praise God, to celebrate with us what God has done this past week, and all the glory goes to Him. Well, let's dive into Galatians chapter 5 and what it teaches us of the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to start this week on the fruit of the Spirit, love. And so we're going to look over the next nine weeks at the nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. But with this being the first one, let's look at the context of what's going on here in Galatians. So Galatians 5 begins with Paul saying that we have been set free in Christ. Free from what? Well, free from sin and also free from our flesh, that part of us that desires to do the opposite of God, the desires for us to be on the throne, the desire to please and to worship self instead of pleasing and worshiping God. And so Paul will paint this powerful contrast here in Galatians 5. Right before he gets to the fruit of the Spirit, he's going to talk about the works of the flesh. And he's going to say that those works all lead to death. But then he comes to the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, all the way to self-control. And you know what that leads to? It leads to life. And so it's all about being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then letting the Holy Spirit flow through us. And so the fruit of the Spirit is what the picture of the Holy Spirit flowing through us. So when the Holy Spirit flows through us, what should our life look like? It should look like one that's characterized by love, by joy, by peace, by patience, by kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These should be characteristic and ultimately of life. And the beautiful thing of these fruit of the Spirit is we know that they're perfectly embodied in Christ, that Jesus is the perfect picture of love, the perfect picture of joy. And so when we think about how are we to love one another, we first have to go to the place of Jesus. So let's dive in and talk about love, because that's the first fruit of the Spirit that Paul says. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love. And it's no surprise here that Paul begins with love. In 1 Corinthians 13, often called the love chapter. Perhaps you've heard it, or most likely you've heard it certainly at a wedding. And uh, you'll cover that chapter all about what love is, what love is not. And then Paul at the end of chapter 13 will say that three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. In fact, when Jesus was asked uh, by the religious leaders and the Pharisees, and the scribes of his day in Matthew 22, what is the greatest commandment? He says in verses 37 through 40, I'd encourage you to look at them uh, maybe today, maybe every day this week and read them, meditate, think on these words because Jesus has asked, what is the greatest commandment? We should take his words very seriously here. He says that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And then he says the second is like in that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. And we know throughout all of Jesus' teaching that our neighbor is to include everyone. So Jesus is saying here that we're to love God with everything that we have and we're to love every single person. And so when we think about specifically how are we to love, how are we to show this fruit of the Spirit, this love, we first have to realize that this love is not our own love. It's God's love that we first felt and then now share with others. 1 John 4, 19 puts it this way, that we love because he, because God first loved us. And so when we think about, let's get practical for a minute, how do we love like Christ? The first way is that we are to love sacrificially. We are to love by sacrificing. And we know this all throughout scripture. When we look at God's love, it's a love of sacrifice. In fact, the Greek word in the New Testament uh, that describes this love, describes God's love, is agape. And agape means sacrificial love, putting the needs of others before our own. And one of the pictures we get of this is in John 15, 
Uh, John is often called the disciple of love, and he writes so much on love in the Gospel of John and in First, Second, and Third John. But in First, or sorry, in John 15, Jesus is teaching about love and His love, and He says later in John 15 that we are known by our love; that people should know us as Jesus' disciples by the love that we show. And He says this in John 15:13 that greater love has no man than this, than that he should lay down his life. For his friend. And of course, Jesus does this by laying down his life uh, uh, on the cross for our sins and for the sins of everyone. And so we know that Jesus' love is perfectly sacrificial. And so our love, and we show our love by sacrificing for others. And so think about this week how can I show God's love to others by sacrificing for them? How can I die to self? and put others' needs in front of my own? How can I serve and sacrifice for my neighbor? How can I sacrifice for my family, for my spouse, for my kids, for my grandkids, uh, for my coworker, for my friend, for someone else at the church that you go to? We all have opportunities to show God's love through sacrifice, to show that agape love to others, to show Christ-like love to others. And so that's number one that I want us to take away and apply this week, that we love by sacrificing. Number two is that we are to love by serving. One of the amazing exercises that you can think about and do is maybe you even want to pause it right after I ask this question. When you think about Jesus, what are some words that come to your mind? Just think about it for a minute. When you think about Jesus, what are some words that come to your mind? Undoubtedly, Christ, Son of God, Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, friend. But you know, if I'm honest in my heart, one of the words that rarely comes to my mind or perhaps very, very late on a long list is that of servant. And yet Jesus, all throughout his ministry, often identified himself as a servant, not just in title, but also in his deeds. Jesus said in Mark 10, 45, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And one of the most beautiful pictures we see is in John 13, right before he goes to the cross. He's with his disciples at the Last Supper. And, uh, and what he does in this moment, says John 13, that Jesus, knowing where he has come from and knowing where he is going in verse 5, he bends down and washes his disciples' feet. Talk about a picture of humility, but talk about a picture of love. Jesus was showing his disciples, hey, this is how you are to love one another, and this is how you are to love the world, by serving others. So this week, let's show Christ-like love to everyone we meet by serving them. Let's pray right now. Jesus, give me an opportunity to serve someone in the next hour, in the next few minutes. Jesus, give me an opportunity to serve and to sacrifice for others today. So I'm really excited for this series. You're going to hear from lots of our different staff members sharing on the fruit of the Spirit. Next week, of course, is going to be on joy. And so what I hope you'll do right now is I hope you'll hit subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. This helps make sure that you see, of course, our next videos because we're releasing all sorts of new content. Uh, Really excited to continue to bring new content with these two goals. Number one, to help you grow in your faith, to help you grow closer to Jesus. And number two, to help you find deep and meaningful Christian community. In fact, our online community continues to grow. We had our very first online community celebration uh, this week. We're going to continue to do that every month. We have believers from all over the world, many different countries, many different continents. Get on a call, spend some time laughing together, praying together, uh, sharing what God is teaching us right now, uh, having some Q&A and just some other great celebrations. And so We'd love to have you subscribe. We'd love to have you join our online community. And if there's any way we can serve you, please let us know. Well, until next week, uh, know that we love you, know that we're praying for you, and we're excited for you to tune in next week as we continue our series on the fruit of the Spirit.